Excuse me, little dog. <coughs> Hi, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking about an over-the-top beautiful day in the collapse of everything. It is Saturday, March 30th, 2024. The middle of Easter weekend, and uh, I was actually going to take a break from the doom and gloom today, and not do a rant, but uh, this fellow out of Sri Lanka, his name is Indika, I don't, can't even begin to pronounce his full real name, but we're going to call him Indika. Uh, from medium.com uh, <laughs> his uh, well n not so much a, a comment totally on the Baltimore bridge collapse but uh, how he is using the Baltimore bridge collapse as a segue into uh, just one of the most the most perfectly articulated explanations of what is going on on this planet. It is just the the endless uh, ironies and metaphors coming out of that that, uh, that Baltimore bridge collapse. And this is what the voice from Sri Lanka. <laughs> has to say about it. Take it away, Indica. Crashing ships are signs of the end times. The future won't have these fossil fueled dinosaurs at all. And of course, he is sharing the same photo that I shared a couple of days ago. One of the great photos. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's all right there, guys, in, in, in one photograph. Uh, this might be the single best photograph uh, I have ever seen. Uh, summing up uh, <laughs> what is going on on this planet. So, Indica, what do you think of this, uh, of this photo? <clears throat> Planes falling out of the sky and ships crashing are not anomalies. These are signs of the times. This is the new normalcy. It's not just Boeing or Baltimore. The Panama Canal is running dry and the Red Sea is off limits because of Western genocide. Almost every choke point is choking and these are just the signs the planet itself is calling time <clears throat> global flying and shipping as we know it simply will not exist in the near future such mass massive machines are not long for this world Soon they will be strange skeletons like the giant dinosaurs. The, f the fossil fueled will become fossils themselves. Some smaller form may survive the cataclysm. Shout out to birds. But not these beasts. That's why all these accidents are not isolated events. They are part of the collapse of everything. Let's start with the fact that we cannot keep going in these beasts because we are headed straight for the bridges connecting us to the rest of the natural world. We have long since lost power to the artificial beast, so the natural world Will just be a casualty. This is a problem because the natural is what the artificial eats. Thus, 
this economy will starve to death while choking on its own waste products. As the saying goes, you are what you eat, and this is the time to eat shit. The fossil eaters will become fossils inexorably. There is no renewable transition out of this. We simply have no like-for-like -like replacements for heavy fuel, mainly diesel. The entire economy runs on heavy fuel, and we are A, running out of economical supply, and B, the emissions are killing us. We're both running out of drugs and dying of an overdose at the same time. Oil is gone from an energy return of 100 to 1 to 10 to 1 to 3 to 1 for last veins like tar sands. You used to be able to poke a hole in the ground and get a gusher, and now you have to frack your water supply to get less and lesser. And it's not like we're producing more of this stuff. Nobody's laying down forests and compressing them over millions of years. This was a one-time inheritance, and we blew it on dumb shit like Dubai. <clears throat> the illusion that you can switch your car for a Tesla has led to the delusion that this is possible to do this for industrial society as a whole. People have no idea how big these machines are and how heavy fuel, mainly diesel, is required to even produce renewables. We can certainly have a different civilization, but we cannot have this one. Once you run out of drugs, you can still have a party, just not an epic fucking bender like we've been on for centuries. There is simply a finite amount of cocaine at the planetary party, and it made us assholes anyways. Of course, billionaires will continue to jet until we guillotine them, but billions will be shit out of luck in the next few decades. When I say we have no like for like replacement, I mean we do not have another energy source capable of moving hundreds of people thousands of miles like jet planes and hundreds of thousands of tons across the open seas like container ships. We could still move stuff and people by sail or zeppelin, but that's not what we're talking about, is it? It's not that such like-for-like -like technology exists and is just hard to scale up. Such technology does not exist at all. It's not even theoretically possible, and even if it was, we would still need the same fossil fuels to build this myth mythical replacement. We would have to basically stop flying and shipping, not to mention trucking, for years to build out a new, shittier fleet that moves less people and stuff for more money. <clears throat> there is simply no way for the algorithm called the economy to process this. Stop growing? Make less money forever? Does not compute. What we have is an irresistible force, economics, 
meeting an immovable object, the planet, and like a ship pile driving a bridge, this just ends in the total collapse of both. Let me walk you through how precisely we're fucked. Using the math of Dr. Tom Murphy, an electric Boeing 737 with equivalent range would require a 300-ton battery, nearly 10 times the weight of the rest of the plane, which is literally a non-starter. <clears throat> Such a plane could reduce its range to 200 kilometers, that's about 120 miles, to get off the ground, at which point you're better off staying there and taking the train. <clears throat> Meanwhile, an electric shipping container would need a 65,000 ton battery displacing two-thirds of the cargo capacity. <clears throat> it would take three electric ships to move the same cargo as one fuel ship using nearly 200,000 tons of batteries to move about 100,000 tons of goods. <clears throat> Needless to say, this is all more expensive than the magic bean juice we found in the ground. The fuel to weight ratio is 20 times worse. Meanwhile, making those batteries would require tearing, mining the earth a new asshole, which it cannot take. <clears throat> you can do the math on this yourself. It's a good substitute for hopeful thinking. Indeed, the modern era is based on being hopeful and not thinking. All future economic policy is based on something working out and not even praying on it. We're literally winging it into oblivion. Because we lived in an age of ever-improving technology, we have missed the fact that A, science and technology have stopped fundamentally improving in the 60s and 70s. We are still flying the 737 and B, this was a historical anomaly. <clears throat> Fossil fuels were a one-time inheritance, a solar battery charged over millions of years, and charging takes a million years. <clears throat> when the juice runs out, it's just out. And worst of all, we used that energy to chew up every other natural resource we could find. We're going to be out of a lot of stuff, including food, water, and most of all, luck. We are simply reaching the physical limits of physics. This entire period of history is some weird interregnum where we hit the snooze button pretending that the end of the fossil fuel era is a bad dream, but it's not. This is the new reality and you have got to wake up and get schooled at some point. I think you know this already. There are signs of plenty. Ever since the corona panic, People have been waiting for some return to normal, and it's just not happening because it won't happen. Entire generations are growing up that will know only abnormal, and generations will come up that know this life only is something dead and gone. Things will keep breaking 
and breaking, and we'll keep hitting new lows that we think are the bottom, but no, there's another one. <clears throat> As the Club of Rome predicted in the 1970s, the 2020s and 2030s are when resources run out, food supplies and population drop, and we are right on schedule. People keep asking, what do we do? Which is not really the relevant question. The question is, when? And the answer is, last century. That was the time to implement global climate communism, but it did not happen, did it? Instead, we got the coke-fueled 80s and the actual end of history. Thus, the crash of the Dolly into the Francis Scott Key Bridge is not some absurd anomaly. It is a sign of the times telling us that the American National Anthem is ending. As Francis Scott Key wrote about the War of 1812, quote, no refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave, and the star-spangled banner is triumph, tri triumph doth wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Key was talking about how no one, in this case the British, could free their slaves and how America would keep reigning R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G. -I -I -G. Well, not anymore, is it? A container ship, you know, from Asia, <clears throat> has just crashed through Key's namesake. As the Chinese would say, the mandate of heaven is withdrawn. The gods themselves are angry, or at least not putting up with this shit anymore. The whole anthropological era is sinking in front of us, and these events are not anomalies. They are the new normal. Parts of Boeing planes falling out of the sky is not just a sign of bad financial engineering. It's a sign of the times, and the times, as Bob Dylan said, are a-changing. And so it ends as Mob Deep, I have no clue who Mob Deep is, as Mob Deep said, party's over, tell the rest of the crew. <clears throat> We're at the end of what Bill Burroughs called the naked lunch, the moment when you can see what's on the end of every fork. We have been eating natural gas and drinking oil and smoking coal and there's nothing left. Plus, we made a god-awful mess of the place. We're just forked now. The fossil fuel era is going the way of the dinosaurs, and this, my friends, is the time of asteroids. <laughs> yes, otherwise known as 8 billion asteroids. 8 billion asteroids. Oh. But it's just another gorgeous Easter weekend on the planet. I, uh, I hear the various lawnmowers and leaf blowers probably getting ready for the Easter egg hunts or the little darlings out there tomorrow. The little, uh, the little darlings gathering up their overpriced chocolate Easter eggs. Uh oh, Jesus. But anyway. 
We have to figure out what to do on this beautiful weekend. So uh, get out there and enjoy your one-time fossil fuel inheritance while you still can. My guys.